The title of this podcast is, If It Bugs You, It's For You. One of my dear, dear friends, uh, Danny, just recently returned from a trip, and it was an amazing trip with incredible experiences. And she mentioned that she enjoyed it more than she would have in the past because of her commitment to the daily practice. And so I've watched Danny grow and develop and work on herself which has inspired me to grow and develop and work on myself even more. So thank you, Danny. Really appreciate you. And while she was on her trip, she had opportunity to be around someone who was, I guess you can call them like a coach. And, um, and they would meet with them on a regular basis. I think it was almost daily. And they would say things that would be reminders of the opportunity life presents for them to work on themselves to really go deep and stay committed to personal development. And one of the things that the coach told them one day was, if it bugs you, it's for you. And that means it's for you to work on. And when I relate that to, to, to the practice in which I've talked about many times in our podcast, and specifically around this idea of if it bugs you, it's for you, is that Anything in life that shows up that is not to your liking, that's an opportunity for the practice. So here, anything that bugs you is your opportunity to work on yourself. This is for you. So you can't handle the coworker being a certain way. Work on yourself first before you do anything to try to make that situation between the two of you better. You got to work on yourself first. If not, you're just going to make a mess of it. And you can look back in your history. I certainly can in mine. And I looked at the things and the damage that I left behind from not being peaceful, accepting the situation like it was, like, like it showed up, and working on myself first before I even tried to go and improve things on the outside. So that's the example with a colleague. It could be your significant other. If what they're doing is a pet peeve or bothers you, it's for you to work on yourself, to be able to handle that. And not handle it by requiring them to be different or making them different, by you become peaceful first. And, and oftentimes when you become peaceful, there's no need, no need to even go talk to them about it. You're peaceful. But if you do need to talk to them about it, it's better to be rooted in a peaceful space before you go trying to take any action or trying to talk to anyone. Think about it. When someone has had a problem with something that you're doing or, or have not done, and they brought it to your attention, but they're not peaceful, that it, it lands on you like blame or an accusation or an accusation than it does seeking to understand or learn. And sometimes people hide behind seeking to understand by the way they phrase the question, but but inherent in it is a lot of judgment, a lot of hurt. And so when people have come to you that way, how's it been received? Not well. Then why, why do it to other people? So again, if something that your significant other is doing is bugging you, settle down inside first. Allow yourself to feel whatever shows up, but don't cling to it. Don't hang on it. Don't make it part of your identity. Release it, let it go. And as I said, oftentimes, it's not even worth mentioning because you've let it go. You've worked on yourself. You can handle it. And then if it is something to talk about, wait until you are peaceful to be able to talk about it. So we check the box on colleagues, significant others. Let's check the box on a, on a life situation. Let's say you're going, you are going through the end of a relationship, a divorce or relationship that has whatever, what will, for whatever reason, come to the end of the road. And in that case, you want to do the same thing. 
if you are deciding how the assets are going to be divided, be peaceful as you do it. Don't be bugged about it. This isn't fair or anything like that. Let all that go. You're going to be peaceful as you go through the, med the, the mediation process. Because not only is the mediation process of physical assets, but it's also the psychological assets. You want to be letting those go too. Like all of them, hold on to nothing that causes you suffering. And then it opens the door or the possibility to have a relationship with this person down the road. And even if that's something you don't choose to do, at least when you think of them, the thought will be rooted in love. It will be rooted in, at one point, there was something about that person that spoke to me, that made me want to be in a relationship with them. And if that's the case, then make it to where when you think of them, you think of them with that. And if that's too hard, then work on having grace and compassion when you think of them, even if the relationship was not a fit. So again, whatever shows up, if it bugs you, it's for you. Your children, the state of your community, your extended family, the country, if it bugs you, it's for you. Don't go and create a problem for other people about it until you're able to handle it. And when do you know you're able to handle it? That it no longer bugs you internally. Now, that doesn't mean that action is not taken on things that require action for the greater good. No. But it does mean that you only take such action after you're rooted in a kind, loving, peaceful place. So think about that. Thank you, Danny. Love it. If it bugs you, it's for you. Mm -hmm.